Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Austin Up Job informational webinar for June. We're so happy to have you here. We'll wait a couple minutes for everybody to come on, but just want to say hey to everybody and hope you're enjoying this cooler day. I think we're still in the hundreds though, but we're all inside. We didn't have to drive to come to this today, so that's definitely an advantage, but just want to welcome everybody to our webinar today. It is hosted by Austin Up. So my name is Cindy Cummings and I am a volunteer with Austin Up. What I'd like to do today is just tell you a little bit about Austin Up and our upcoming events that we have. Austin Up's vision is to create a region that responds to aging as a dynamic rather than a stagnant force. We are all aging all the time and we wanna make Central Texas a place that supports each of us as we age. Austin is number one in a lot of things, but not when it comes to employment for older workers. Austin Up is working to enlighten employers about the value of multi-generational workplace. We also hold four 50 plus in Texas job fairs across the community. We've held two thus far. We have two that are gonna be coming up. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. And these events connect older job seekers to employers and they include presentations to help older adults. In addition, we will hold six webinars. We've held many of them and actually added a seven. I'll tell you a little bit more about that too. And all of these webinars provide valuable information for job seekers. We are really excited about the job fairs being in person. Uh, we've held two thus far. We consider them to be successful because we're actually helping to match employers to employees. And it's nice to get in front and in person with people and be able to talk about um, your job goals with those employers face to face. So our September 14th event is going to be held at Shalom Austin, and we held one there pre-COVID. It's a great facility. It's a great place to have an event like this. And that's going to be September 14th from 10 to 12. October 14th, we're going to be at South Affinity at South Park Meadows. So we're excited to be able to bring these to you. We wouldn't be able to bring these to you without our support of our sponsors. And AARP is our primary sponsor for our job programs. They really see the importance of being able to help older adults find jobs so that they can live the life that they want to. We have some other sponsors that I'd like to say a quick thank you to. And those are Seniorific News, United Healthcare, Brookdale at Home, Heavenly Care, Turn and Turnkey Transitions. So thank you to all of those sponsors. They actually have helped to underwrite the entire event and uh, we're really, really thankful to them. In addition to helping older adults find work, we provide events that help to support our mission of meeting the unmet needs of the Central Texas aging population. We recently held an event and it was called Age My Way, which I love that. And actually that title came from Older Americans Month and May was Older Americans Month. And there's a theme each year for Older Americans Month and it was Age My Way. So we came together in a hybrid event and we provided information to older adults and then we asked for their feedback, which I think everybody appreciates being asked for their feedback. We hope to be able to take this information and get it out to our constituents, to nonprofits, to businesses in the near future. So we hope we can share what we learned from those events very soon. And we talked about topics such as housing, technology, and um, what works for you when you're looking for a business that you want to do business with. So it was a really exciting time. And that's uh, what we've done so far this year, which is quite a bit. Um, now, I just have a flyer up right now. I just wanted to talk about our upcoming Zoom webinar that we have with Mark Miller. He's going to be talking from two to three, and his topic is going to be career and industry disruption, what to do about it. There, there's quite a bit of disruption going on. So I'm really curious to see what he has to say. And we were contacted by Apple and Apple has some really interesting job opportunities for all ages that they really do see the benefit of working with older adults. And so they're gonna be holding an event with us. It's going to be on July 27th from two to three. And they're going to be talking about opportunities in the retail environment and the benefits. There's lots of benefits that are available. So if you're looking for uh, insurance, health insurance, I think it's probably one of the key benefits that 
that they offer besides just being in a really cool environment with the opportunity to have uh, movement, being able to move up into other departments from that retail division. And again, we've already talked about the job fairs that we have coming up. And you can always go to our website at austinup.org and learn more about our events that are coming up. And also, um, if you want to become a sponsor, that would be awesome too. So what I'd like to do now, I'm going to go ahead and have this slide go away. I'd like to introduce now, uh, have our speaker come in. And our speaker is Pam Otten. So Pam, if you will come in while I try to get rid of this. All right. So Pam, come on in. I'm coming, but it says I can't start my video because the host has stopped it. So Oh, that's so rude of me. That's I okay. hate that. That's like when I send an email and somebody says, oh, you were in my spam. I'm like, thanks. That really hurt my feelings. I hope that's the worst spam. thing that happened to me today. <laughs> is it? Oh, is that the worst thing that you hope? That, really? Yeah, I hope that's the absolute worst thing yeah, that's that's that will happen to that's me today. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem in the big scope of things. Well, Pam, let me just uh, read your formal introduction. You're an award-winning educator, researcher, trainer, mentor, author, and consultant. She's lived in three countries and five states before settling in her beloved Austin. Friendly, hardworking, and coming to you with decades of work experience in a variety of industries, Practical Pam presents tools you can implement today that help you take control of the chaos that is the modern job hunt. Uh, Pam loves to coffee consult with job seekers as they search for their next work adventure. After presenting a similar talk in 2019, attendees encouraged her to write these modern but simple tools in a book, which she did. And you can find her books on Amazon. Was, <laughs> was it from our event, Pam, or a different event? Um, I presented at Launchpad Job Club, which is also oh. an Austin Job Club. Yes. And um, when Kathy was still in town, uh, she um, accoladed my talk. You, you know, they do talks every week with that job thing at club. And um, I was really pleased by that. And then I was able to make the circuit, talked for you guys that year and um, for some of the other job talks in town that, you know, you kind of go around and then people encouraged me to write it down. And so I did. And so it's a book on Amazon. It's not, it's really just this talk that I'm going to give you today. So it's not something that I don't try to push the book on people, but if it's something you enjoy or feel like you want to get more, like just see the slides or whatever, you can do it. It's a book on Amazon. So, yeah. Well, you can buy the book for Father's Day for someone you there love you go. or some other holiday. But how cool to be an author and to actually have something at Amazon. That's super, it's so super cool. cool. <laughs> it's it's really not cool. as hard as you think, but it does take some doing. It's, you know, it takes a while to pull the whole thing together and then to, to shepherd it because it's, you know, a living document when it's out there. So, well, I've had a book idea for a long time, but I have so many ideas. I just can't even accomplish them all in one day. And that's probably one of the things you're going to talk to us today is about getting focused. I would think that's probably key and critical. Oh, <laughs> what I want to do is just give some instructions to the people who are attending today. The first is uh, um, Pam has a presentation that she's going to start. We encourage you to ask questions. You're going to ask questions through the question and answer or through the chat, and I'm going to be monitoring it. So as you ask a question, if it's appropriate for that slide at that time, I'll interrupt her. If it's something that's kind of off that slide, then we'll just wait to the end. And we have saved time at the end that we can answer all those off questions. So we're excited for them. We want you to ask questions. We want it to be as interactive as possible. So without further ado, Pam, I'm going to go away. Um, hopefully my video will come back. Maybe you have to let me back in. I don't know how <laughs> that knows? will work, but <laughs> I'm going to go away and you can begin. Thank you, Cindy. I'm going to share my screen with you and um, it's a PowerPoint presentation. Um, and I think we can get through it really well. Um, and hopefully you can enjoy it, but definitely take Cindy's advice and interrupt with any questions you have, be happy to answer them. It's a little like talking into a box with no feedback. So um, any feedback is, is really appreciated. Um, I, my objectives for you today are just to offer you some encouragement in your job search, um, to give you some modern job search tools that you might not have thought about, and to share some tips for your job hunt. I am currently in the process of looking for work myself again. Um, when I put this talk together, it was um, 
is a fruition of a job search that began at the in the summer of 2018. And so I really um, looked into a lot of different things. And then when I would talk to people, they're like, well, you ought to explain that at a job close because that is a modern way of thinking about it. And so that's what this talk is about. So let me share some tools and tips for you and to continue to offer you some encouragement because looking for work is difficult. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about me since it is sometimes weird when you have a little talking box there. This is my family. It's a picture after um, having a large steak dinner together. The last time we were all together was in July of 2021. Um, and th these are my people. So that is my husband, Mike. We'll be celebrating 25 years of marriage this summer. That is my oldest son, Daniel. He's kind of sit standing on sort of a, he's in the backyard and he's kind of a little shorter, appears shorter there than he actually is. And he's serving in the United States Army and he's based in um, Camp Zama, Japan right now. And that's this was our sort of goodbye dinner together. This is my son, Thomas, who's a recent graduate of UTD. And he's got an internship with Toyota and is fast tracking a master's in data analytics. And this is my youngest son, Matthew, who is making the circuit of um, working at local restaurants in Cedar Park. He grew up um, graduated in the pandemic and so he's still sort of getting his footing that way but he um, definitely is a fixture in our in our town of Cedar Park Texas and I just want to ask you to ask yourself this question why are are you here why are you here and I think we all have um, answers to that question that vary in levels of what I would call pain um, some of us are here because we really are just fed up with what we're doing now, or we are um, just f struggling um, maybe just to get back into the workforce. But there's a lot of questions that surround the question of why. Why are you here? And I um, just really love to think, I just love to laugh and to, tw and to twist things around. And so I thought, well, what would a motivational poster um, look like if, if you were to ask yourself that question in the job? seeking realm. And I think it is important to stay inspired. We're here, I guess, because we might have had a plan, but then we were we were punched in the face. Um, and I hope you're chuckling a little bit. Um, think of that uh, inspirational poster, but I think it is so important to laugh. Um, when you get to be in an opportunity where you can be our, in our age category, we have to remember that this is a bit of a, you know, this is a blip on our radar. It is a, it is a t time to maybe readjust. Um, it can be super painful, but um, try to stay laughing through some of it. And I think if we can um, encourage each other to laugh a little bit through the process, um, it makes it a little bit easier to get through. So I really don't think the question that we should be spending a lot of time on when we're networking or even thinking about looking for work or we're looking for work, it's not really why are you here is the question. The question really is what's next. And if we can keep that little bit of future focus, a little bit more energy to ask ourselves always, okay, so what's next? What can I do next on this job search? What's next for me? Um, I think we, um, not why or how did I get here, but what, what's next? Um, it helps us stay future focused and it gives us an opportunity to laugh. And maybe the next thing is something to laugh. And maybe the next thing is really something super detailed that we have to address. Um, but either way, we're um, then moving forward, which is the point of the job search. I wanted to um, let you know, know what my job seeking goal is because I am also looking for work. So if you're listening to this talk and you know somebody who'd use my, um, my skill set, I would really appreciate a, 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 hat, a handshake with that person. And I think that when I show you some of the statistics, even though we don't know each other, even in this space, we don't know each other, um, just handshaking, um, even loose contacts. I met this woman, she gave this job talk, I think she might be a fit for your company, is actually a very good connect, not just for me, but it's a good connect for you. It gives you an opportunity to talk to somebody about somebody else who's looking for work. And that shows some generosity of spirit. And um, I'm forever trying to get people that I know that are uh, looking for work connected with people that are hiring. I think it's, um, it just, just it, it feels really good to help people in the situations and to help them if it's, you know, looking for work or whatever, we know that that is a life-giving and strong thing to do for each other. Um, so I want to tell you a little story because I think on top of having this what's next mentality, one of the things that is really super helpful for me before I get into my tools for you is the concept of having a metaphor to hang your hat on as you are 
job searching. And so I'm going to offer you this metaphor, and it's a fish story. And I don't know how many fisher people we have on the um, call today, but let's let me just set this story up for you. So I quit a job without having the swing. I didn't have a place to go afterwards, and I was taking some time to rethink. Um, this was um, early in 2018, and I have a really good friend who happens to have a beach house at Gulf Shores, Alabama, and she invited me out to to go with her. And I, I thought, well, hey, if you ever if you have a friend that has a beach house in Gulf Shores, Alabama, you should go. It's a white sand beach, sits on the Gulf, and I just want you to picture yourself on a white sand beach at the Gulf and at sun, sunset. And um, it's the Gulf of Mexico, so you're when you're sitting on the beach, you're facing south, and the sun will be setting to your right, and you know the east is to your left. So the sun is setting, and it's your typical beach scene. It's a typical beach town. And so there's lots of people on the beach for the sunset. Then there's the simultaneously a ton of people that have just been on the beach all day, and they're packing up to head in for dinner. And so they have their wagons and their beach towels and their beach balls, and they're all packed up and they're heading into dinner. And then you have all the photographers coming out, taking the couple that's engaged and the multi-generational family in their khaki pants and the white shirts, getting their pictures taken. And it's just a beautiful scene. The little beach scavenger birds are all around. The tide is way out and the, the sunset is streaking the sky. And if you can put yourself there for just a minute, do. And so sit yourself next to a good friend, be talking, having a little drink on the beach, watching the sunset. And as this is happening, right in front of me on the beach is there's a um, there's a place where people go to fish because there's a little bit of a sandbar out about 30 yards into the water. And the sandbar is, is great. So you're able to walk sort of out there, you get a little wet, maybe waist high water, and then you kind of come up and you're in knee high water and you can fish there. And there's fish on the sandbar all day long. And they you know, catch things or don't catch things, but they have fun. It's sort of a family thing to do. You always see dads and sons out there, mothers and daughters, people fishing. So at sunset, those people start coming in and there's this man and this boy and they're coming in with all this um, tackle that next to us, they are putting, uh, packing up this big old wagon full of stuff. And they're sort of lingering there for a few minutes. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this man coming out from the condos behind us and he's walking toward the beach. And he is literally what you would consider sort of like, like the most stripped down beach guy ever. He's got no shoes on. He's in a sunset pair of swim trunks, sunset colored pair of swim trunks. He's completely shirtless and totally ripped. His hair is long and curly. He's got no sunglasses, no hat, nothing. He's so tan. And all that he's got in his arm is just this big old fishing pole. And it's really stripped down, but it's, it's big. And he's walking toward this man and his son and they're standing over a five gallon bucket full of water and apparently there's little bait fish in there and so they have this little conversation I can't hear and then the kid and the, and the dad they leave with this big old wagon full of tackle and stuff and I just sort of lose track of this guy for about five minutes in my consciousness and when I turn around I have to turn because all these birds are everywhere and they're coming in because this man has reached into this bait bucket and has filleted up a you know a six inch steak of fish and is putting it on the biggest hook I ever seen and he's standing up and he starts marching out to the sandbar now the sun at this point is down and I nudge my friend Karen I'm like we got to watch this and this guy goes out and the and the um the tide is starting now to come in so it's definitely not the safest place to be out in the water right now and he goes out there to the sandbar and casts this rod and it goes in and it was not three seconds before that rod just goes straight parallel to the water and that fishing rod gets caught underneath his armpit and he starts reeling in what must have been a ginormous fish because the tip of his his um, fishing rod was bent straight towards the water. And he starts struggling with this fish for five minutes, 10 minutes and in about 10 minutes in, he makes a, a huge urge and tries to push that fishing rod straight into his hip socket. And I turned to my friend Karen, I said, that is gonna hurt tomorrow. And another five minutes, so we're at 15 minutes of him struggling with fish. And he, he's able to get the fish close enough to shore where it starts to come toward the sandbar. So it's gonna go up over the sandbar and it's gonna come into the pool in front of us. So I said to Karen, we gotta stand up and watch this fish. And we stand up at the edge of the room. And meanwhile, the waves are just getting bigger and bigger. And the man is reeling in this fish and the fish comes close to the shore. And as soon as he gets close enough, you can start seeing that it's not really a fish, it's a shark. And the dorsal fin breaks the water. And as the fish is about ready to come, like beach itself on the beach at carrying my feet, it flips and it cuts the line and it heads out. 
to back to sea. And it's just the most miraculous, beautiful moment in nature history for me. I said to Karen, that is like remarkable. This very angry fisherman starts marching through the waves back to shore. And I said, wow, that thing was big. He goes, yeah, it was a shark, five footer. And he comes back to sit back behind us at his tackle. And um, I just know it's a moment for him because he's lost this huge shark. And um, lo and behold, I just turn about five minutes later and he literally has re, he's put another hook on his line and he's rebated and he's starting to stand up to march back out into the shark infested dark waters. And I just looked at him and he, and I said, that sure was something. And he turns to me and says, lady, if you wanna see something, you stick around. I'm about to hook me another, and I'm, this time I'm going to bring her all the way in. And I just, I was like the tenacity of that guy, <laughs> amazing tenacity. And ever since then, I've just been really, really struck with the metaphor of a hunt, a fishing hunt, because I've had some of that exact same feeling about getting a job. <laughs> I've had jobs, and this will come up again a little bit later in this talk, that have been on the line. And maybe some of you have been experienced that, where you've set everything up perfectly, you've hooked the thing, and it is, and it goes away. And, um, and then you're not in the picture anymore. You are, you are in an alternate reality as a job seeker. You are... Um, uh, you know, you are not the multi-generational family on the beach. You're not the people getting married with their pictures taken. You're not just headed home for a supper on the beach. You are um, back out marching into the shark infested waters <laughs> trying to find your next um, job. And so I say, put some lines in the water, um, uh, do it smart, strip it down, and um, know it might be a little lonely, but it might also be a bit of an adventure as well. And I give you a metaphor. I give you this fishing metaphor. I use it with friends of mine um, just to say, hey, like here, fishy, fishy, let's go. Um, let's, you know, see if you can get a bite on the line. So I give you a metaphor. It's not really a temper tool. It's just a metaphor. And I want you to think about yourself now, because if I was in a room with you, we would be this next exercise, we would be doing this together. But I want you to think about somebody you know personally that has done something extraordinary. And this person can actually be yourself. And I want you to think about it either as like an ongoing accomplishment or one time event where you're like, yeah, that person did this thing. Try to bring that person's thought to yourself, their relationship to you and their accomplishment and hold that for a minute. And it could be anything like they caught that fish or they climbed that mountain or they traveled to this remote place and did this thing. It could be a lot of different things, but what is an insp inspiring moment for you? And just give yourself a moment to think about who that you personally know, not some person on television, not, you know, not something you heard about or saw a video about. I'm talking about somebody you know that overcame odds and survived them. And I just want you to hold that in your heart for a little bit because we all, especially at this age, we all have extraordinary lives and we all have stories. And if you can kind of keep those in there and then when you're networking with people, um, you know, tell an extraordinary life story. <laughs> you know, I, my cousin once, I once, um, and, and make it genuine and be inspired so that what, what's behind your eyes when you're talking to people is some inspiration. You know, offer your network a little bit of, little bit of oomph when you're out there um, and, um, and be inspired by the stories you already know. Uh, I'm gonna show you some slides that are going to convince you that talks like this are really great and the things I'm gonna teach you are awesome, but the idea is really just to network. <laughs> Um, that is the way people find jobs. It's the way that you will find your next job um, more often than not. I just urge you to attend those job seeking events, no matter how awkward they are, and to spend as much time as you can in your community. Um, if, if you can handle the social media, then go ahead and post, I'm looking for work. Does anyone know anybody looking for somebody like me? Um, and reach out to help your network, but also reach out to ask for what you're looking for. Um, uh, it will open doors for you. Jobs are found by networking. Um, this latest statistic is 77% of jobs are found that way. And so if we're spending 90% of our time online and 10% of our time networking, we got it absolutely backwards. We need to just be um, really working on networking. And networking looks a little different in um, 
this day and age, but networking is everywhere. Uh, whether you're heading to, um, if you're standing in the grocery store, I recommend that you don't wear your gardening clothes, you know, just step it up a little bit. And if you see somebody wearing a shirt that says Google on it and you want to work there, um, go ahead and talk to them. Uh, always put your resume in a um, format on your phone so that you can give it to the next person that you are talking to that wants to say says that they have jobs at their company hey why don't I send you my resume and be able to attach it right away and just send it off um, find out ways to use your the technology you have close to you to be able to be involved in networking um, really um, take these numbers to heart and just know uh, making these kinds of connections are really important I'm going to ask you to connect with me here in a little bit and send a little note to me and tell me that you saw me on um, the YouTube video of this this thing or, or you saw me live as I'm making this presentation, um, send a connection to me, tell me how you saw me and I'll, I'll be sure to accept it. I have um, a hyper networker on LinkedIn and so you can always look at my network when you get connected to me and ask me if there's anybody that I, that I can handshake for you. Because it's not necessarily that these are my best friends, it's just the idea if I can give you a soft, um, just a weak tie relationship um, that will elevate your um, your resume significance and your application significance. So just remembering these numbers a little bit to if you're really looking for work and you're anxious for work, let's um, do that through networking. So let's do the first networking um, thing that I would do with you if we were in person, and that's called LinkedIn on your phone. And I'm hoping that you all know what a QR code is, but if you don't, that's a QR code up in the top, the blue on the screen is a QR code. And those things are scannable now by any camera on any phone. And when you scan that, it brings up um, it brings up information, okay? And there are some nefarious uh, QR codes out there, so I wouldn't just be on the street downtown Austin scanning every QR code you see with your camera. But if somebody is asking you to um, connect with them, you can do that through LinkedIn on your phone. So if you open up LinkedIn on your phone, do that right now, you will see a screen that looks a little like this. This is actually the networking screen. So you click on the bottom there where it says my network and your network will show up on, um, and that's what you're seeing here is my network feed. And then you will see a little um, blue dot and sometimes it looks like a world, mine looks like a person. And you, if you click on that blue dot, what pops up is this um, screen that says, can you add a contact or scan a QR code? So if you're in person, you just click on the blue dot, you say, scan the QR code. And what, ha what pops up is, a, um, is that top screen where the blue is, where it says scan, and then it says my code. And so all you have to do is have the other person get to that same screen, go to their net, my network, click the, the blue dot, say the scan by code, and then you can bring up your code or they can bring up their code and the other person scan and then you can scan. And so when you're scanning then, you're making a direct collect connection through LinkedIn and that person and you are now connected. So it's a very easy way to do um, in-person networking very quickly. So you don't have to say, what's your name again and all that other stuff, you're just connected. So I hope you have brought out your phone and that's working for you. You should be able to scan my QR code straight from this presentation screen and see um, my name and my LinkedIn feed pop up for you. All right, so <clears throat> keeping your phone with you all the time. Um, I'm hoping that everybody has one. I know just a handful of people who don't. So I'm hoping you do and that you have LinkedIn on your phone. If you don't, download LinkedIn right now because 87% of job seekers are on LinkedIn. And um, that's how you might really be able to find um, your next connection. I also wanted to give you a little bit of encouragement of um, uh, the alternate reality that job seekers fall into. And, and I um, can't empathize enough with job seekers. I think we are uh, a very, um, we're, we're very open to a lot of mood swings because it's difficult. Um, and we know that we would like to be employed because we know we have skills we'd like to give um, to people. And I think, I think a lot of books out there right now are very much like, you know, find your life's purpose and all of that. And I think sometimes it's like my life's purpose is to get a paycheck, um, to be able to have a work-life balance or whatever. And that's okay to not have 
some grandiose idea about your life's purpose to just basically to want to get a paycheck. Um, and I just want to know you to understand that the alternate reality for me and for job seekers I've talked to is if I can accomplish two to four job seeking tasks a day, that is about as much as I can do. Um, anything else is, is feels like I'm just um, spinning my wheels. And so if you can make one of those events, one of those tasks, a networking task in some way, and then all the other ones to be applying for jobs or maintaining your job search, then do that. Um, but no, if you're used to being productive as I am at work, when I can get 10 to 30 things done a day, and that's just a, that's a regular day at work, that's not the same when you're job seeking. And so scale it back a little bit, your expectations, and allow yourself the time to actually do this well. So that is my little, um, uh, that's a long intro to help you sort of see this rapid part fire seven tool step presentation. I um, already gave you the LinkedIn on your phone. This is for those people out there that love to take notes. So we've done number one. So we're heading into number two. Um, the thing that I find really the hardest part of job hunting in this day and age is the fact of organization. Uh, it used to be that you could just you sort of keep track of everything in folders on your desktop and it gets way out of control very quickly. I don't know how many uh, apps you've logged into to put the kind of um, jobs you get pushed to you on a regular basis in your email, but if you haven't done that yet, there's lots of ways to do that. So go figure that out. It's pretty easy to do. And then very quickly, you'll be overwhelmed with what am I supposed to do now with these 30, 40, 50 job leads that keep coming to me every day. And that um, is mind boggling in itself and it can, and it, it's the weeds. And so I ask you to help yourself get out of the weeds. And I'm, I, I'm gonna say to you that if you've registered for all these different job sites, you're gonna be in um, it very quickly over your head. And I'm, I think I'm preaching to the choir when I say that. So let me introduce uh, an idea or concept to you called Kanban, which comes from out of, out of project management, out of the Japanese. And it's a whole concept of if you have a large project to do, you can actually have a backlog of things you need to do, a buffer of things you need to do, the things you're working on and things you're done. And if you just move these tickets across a digital board or even just post-it notes, um, it will allow you to stay organized and not get too overwhelmed. And I was looking for a way to stay organized a couple of years ago when I was in this job search, and it was hard to find. The um, a, a prior job seeking um, organization tools were very antiquated. And what I really loved was this job seeking tool called Hunter. And it runs along with my metaphor a little bit there with the fish, but also just the concept of being able to use a Kanban board to be able to actually manage a job search straight from your computer and your phone um, helps you stay on top of your lists of things to do. So when you're not or networking, then your list of things to do gets built for you with a with a Kanban board like this. Um, it's very visual. It's for people that don't like spreadsheets as much as they like to see things visually. Um, and it helps you um, because it's tool toward the job seeker, it helps prompt you for the next thing you need to do. So if you load up a job, it's going to actually prompt you to say, hey, um, do you want to send a resume to that job? And then when you send the resume, it's like, do you want to send, um, you know, a follow up note or whatever? And it, and it also sets you up with some really strong analytics. And so I recommend it's a free app and I recommend you do it. So here's my um, original job seeking board when I was looking for work a couple of years ago. And so the way it's set up here is you see that there's, you know, here's the wish list of jobs, here's my apply jobs, these are the jobs I had interviews for, these are the ones I lost, these are the ones that I found. Um, and so you can, <clears throat> each one of those squares on there actually is a clickable link that allows you to hold all the documentation that you're sending to those companies and also all their documentation. So the job description and, every, and all of the pieces of information. And then up at the top of the screen allows you to start tracking your to-do list, um, your metrics and even where those jobs are. So let's look a little bit in more detail. So it's super easy to understand. Um, it gives you data. It tells you like the lat. It always stacks the job. So when you're when you are um, getting a job on a wish list, it puts the last job you asked to be added to the wish list on top. 
It stacks the jobs. It gives you the date so you know how far away ago um, things were so very clearly in those original pieces. And it gives you that visual sense that things are moving along. So you just have to get back to your laptop or your desktop computer and open it up to know where you are in the middle of your job search. And what's nice about it tangentially is that when you see stuff that adds to your wish list that you don't get around to applying for, you recognize actually intuitively the jobs you're qualified for and you can start deleting stuff um, that helps things um, move along. So when you add a job to your wish list, it will, if, if you're adding it from a different place like Glassdoor or Indeed or whatever, it will automatically start populating for you the job description, the URL where it was. So you can go right back there and click it to go read it back where you found it. It will, um, it will upload the uh, little icon of the company if it's in there and it prompts you to remember the information that you're looking for. So you can just start filling as much out as you want. Never gives you a little like red arrow that you haven't filled something out. It's just opportunity for you to start keeping stuff organized. Um, it is a navigatable, it allows you to add tasks and things to do. I want to write this cover letter, tailor the resume. I'm going to get this. What do I have to do? You can actually write that stuff down um, in there the way you want it to say, but it will prompt you and that helps you kind of move you forward. Um, and then it helps you stay on track with your job search because if you come back up to the top here, this is my second board, there's a place called metrics and it'll actually show you um, what it is that you're working on, how much time you spent there. Um, and if you go to activities, it'll actually will um, like actually pull. So if I'm gonna send a resume to Indeed, but I need to follow up to my um, educational staffing solutions, it'll show me, you know, send your resume to Indeed, apply to your, in a list, a to-do list. And so it becomes very, a very much a very strong place to um, track what it is you need to do across all companies. And so, yeah, you may have a file out there that sits on your desktop for each one of those places that you're applying to. I don't know, but you could actually even upload those documents and just attach them right on your Kanban board underneath those clickable buttons. It's not hard and I don't want to spend much more time. It's not, this is not a training um, video. I don't get paid by Hunter, um, but I am just telling you it's a really strong tool. So I do want to give you just a couple of things if you're going to do it so that you don't get lost in the weeds on this because that's the last thing you need, but I don't think it takes much training. It's probably 10 minutes of your time, 15 minutes of your time to get organized, and then you're and then you're set to go for the for the rest of your hunt. So um, install it on your laptop and your phone. The first thing, go to Hunter um, and and set it up on your laptop. You sign up for it for free, and it is um, it. it it will then live on your laptop and you'll get those job boards and you can situate them. Once you're in, you're gonna have this icon that appears. You should be in your Chrome web browser because that's the woman that wrote this program is, um, she's very connected there. So she, to, um, to all of that suite of products. So she only pretty much supports the Chrome browser. So if you haven't browsed in Chrome, you probably should if you're gonna use Hunter. And so it'll automatically appear there in your search bar window and that becomes important again, or you might have to be prompted to install the extension. Um, then you can do your job search from anywhere. So this is an example where I was out at LinkedIn, I saw this job at AWS and I wanted to apply for it. So what I do is I click the little Hunter icon at the top, and then I click the little Hunter icon down on the bottom right, and it prompts me, do you wanna add this to your wish list? And as soon as I click add there, it shows up as my next job on my wish list. And so that is really the only training you kind of need is to get on your laptop or your desktop. It's best to work from there um, to get it set up. And then once you do, just make sure you're in Chrome and you can start surfing all your job boards and this little, um, this little icon down here will connect you and allow you to add the jobs right there. Then when you click on that, the job description, everything is already in there for you. And then you can just move on to, you know, to add activities, the things you wanna do. You can take notes, um, add any context you have there, uh, upload any documents you need, um, and you can even research the company right from there. Um, Hunter itself has the built-in job boards you can even surf jobs from there. It's a very international company, so you can find jobs if you want to just move to Australia. I don't blame you. Go ahead. You can look for jobs there. So. Um, 
And then after you're on Hunter on your laptop, then go ahead and install it on your phone. It's a free app. It uses all, um, it uses any platform to install on your phone. And it's very, very then seamless to add jobs from your phone. So you're, if you're anything like me, you know, you're standing around in a line someplace, you're reading your email, you see a job and you want to add it to your wish list to deal with later. And you can do that exactly right from your phone. Um, you will, uh, want to do that through the Hunter app though. So let's say you get pushed a job in the email and go ahead and open a Hunter um, and um, make sure that you click on the little world button. It will bring you to the, on the top where the um, job board is and the job board itself is tracking you. It knows which jobs to push to you. You'll quickly find the job and you'll see like, this is a LinkedIn job host. I wanted to add this um, to my job board and you'll see that you can add it right there in LinkedIn from your phone and feel free to do that. But you can also press the purple button that says save jobs and then it'll add it to your Hunter um, wish list on top there. So I just find it to be extremely easy to keep track of my job search when I'm using Hunter. So much so that I upgraded for 10 bucks a month um, and I did that last time as well. It's a really nice thing to have um, as a toolbox. It's not that expensive and it's easy to cancel. Again, I don't get paid by Hunter to do this. I just like it because it isn't um, it isn't then like pigeonhole me only to LinkedIn jobs or only to Indeed jobs or whatever is allowing me to manage my whole job search in one place, which can get crazy in today's information age. So again, this was not meant to be some sort of um, you know, sales job, nor was it meant to be uh, like, you know, a complete training on Hunter, but it's, I think it's enough to get you started. So that was tool number two. Um, tool number three is, um, if you don't know what the ATS is, then you haven't been in the job search very long, but every job now is being tracked by these applicant tracking systems and um, everything you type seems to be noted. And then if you're not typing the right things, things you don't ever get an interview, you can apply for a million jobs and no one will ever look at you because you're not using the right keywords, which is what application, applicant tracking systems are designed to do. And there's a bunch of them and all the big companies use them and all the little companies started using them as well. And it makes it very difficult to get a job, um, especially um, if you're just using the resume approach. So let me tell you how to outmaneuver that. Um, and there's a company that it's an old timey, it's not old timey now, but it was very hot a couple of years ago. And now it's sort of taken back and into the background, but it's called job scan. And if you add that to this technique that I call T-chart, which has its own problem, it has its own positives, even without job scan involved, um, it will help you. Um, and I'll, let me talk to you about the T-chart. So, um, job scan is a, is I'm also not going to train you on job scan because it's very easy to find. And all it's asking you to do is say, can I get your resume through the applicant tracking system? That's its job is to be an advocate for the job seeker. So you can just paste your resume on one side in your cover letter, and then you can paste the job description and you can ask it to scan it to see if you are a match for the job. And in this instance, the job I was looking for, I was a perfect match for the job um, in my mind and in the um, and in the job descriptions mind, but I only got a 37% match rate with job scan the first time I scanned my resume through for this particular job. It was maddening. It's very frustrating. If you've ever used job scan and try to just exclusively use job scan, it can take you a long time and they ask you to try to get above 80% in order to get an interview. And I want you to get an interview. We all want the interview because once we get the interview, we can get the job. So, um, but we have to get to the interview stage. And so I've used job scan for a long time and I couldn't, I sometimes couldn't push it past 60%, even if I knew I was a great applicant for the position. And so um, I met with somebody once and they explained to me the concept of a T-chart. And this is something that you can attach directly to your cover letter or directly to the back end of your resume and then be assured you will get an interview. Uh, it will, it works almost every single time. I've had people use this technique and it is bizarre because they will, they tell me that their human resource um, person complimented them um, on their T-chart. They wished all applicants would do this. Um, and all it is, and I will walk you through this very quickly, is a three column um, Microsoft Word or Google Doc, where you just number the job um, 
requirements that you saw on the web post. You write them down word for word in the second column, and then you ex explain in narrative form why you're a fit. And so in this case, I was a perfect fit for this company, and this was my big fish that got away. And I just am telling you, it's these were their job requirements, and this is how they wrote them. And if there's misspellings and anything in theirs or grammatical inconsistencies, you keep them there. You just type them just the way they saw them or copy and paste them there. And then you write your narrative um, for each one of them, trying to give as many numbers as you can, because um, always when people are interviewing, they love to have numbers. And then at the very end, no matter what the bullet point is, you ask for an interview. And so you just get them through your, if they get to this document, they actually read it all the way through, they will love you. And then you score an interview. And so make sure that's the last thing you say is I'd love to come and work for you. Um, if you do this, um, this is what happens. So I took my T-chart and I got to 65%. I wrote that T-chart, got to 65% at JobScan. And then instead of spending 400 hours trying to get past 80%, I just, JobScan gives you all these ideas. And it's like the difference between like, I applied myself to, I mastered this or whatever. You just have to take certain words, keywords and change them up a little bit. And with a, in about five minutes, I was able to get to 87%, got the interview and um, landed the job, but then the contract money for it drew, you know, like, I don't know, I got, it got away. The, the shark fin tail busted the thing, but this has gotten me many, many job interviews and I sure, I know it will give, get some for you as well. So that's tool number three. Um, tool number four is, um, is uh, LinkedIn messaging tips. And I, I just have to say that getting into people in LinkedIn isn't as hard as you think. And when you use them appropriately, when you, when you can just say, you know, I just applied, could you bring my resume forward? Um, I really am aligned with your company's values. Just allowing yourself to get out there, maybe register for the premium thing so you can set B to B, connect with me. I, I have lots of connections in the area and I can try to um, connect you to an HR person. If you see someone in my network, let me know. And then you can just do these. You're not asking them to, you know, bend over backwards outside their job, but you're just trying to give them a face um, to, to uh, marry to your application. Um, so I recommend that you really start with LinkedIn as you're trying to make some of those connections. So, and then of course, follow up with your handwritten emails are appropriate now, um, but you can continue to send in hand, handwritten notes as well. Um, feel free to do that. Uh, people really like to get mail. So, um, and mail that isn't just give me's, but thank yous is really appropriate. So that's my next tool, my tool four. Um, Tool five comes down to resumes, and I'm hoping that if you're in the job market, you've already had people look over your resume, have talked to you about your resume, feedback. This is not a resume workshop, but um, certainly your resume is going to be a deal for you. Uh, one of the things that you have to remember is that these people that are hiring are um probably a lot younger than us. Um, they're very in tune with this whole concept of the gig economy. And so you can make the gig economy really work for you, especially if you've had to hop in and out of the workforce a little bit um, because you're caring for people or whatever. Um, my, um, there's been a lot of talk in job circles about, you know, so, you know, maybe you get pigeonholed into a career, but some of your early career stuff you want to bring forward again, you can use the gig economy to your advantage by revising your resume. So my original resume looks a little like this, where I had my, um, uh, like had my core competencies and my accomplishments and stuff, but all the stuff that I was really trying to do was super buried in my resume at the very end of page two. And I didn't like the way that that was, um, it wasn't hitting anybody with any um, oomph. And so I um, really thought a lot about what, what was it I was trying to do. And what I did was I took, I had had a lot of temporary roles. And so I, I invented my own um, consulting company and I called it Blue Sunflower Consulting because that was me. And um, I called myself the owner of it and I, I put all of those gigs together. Um, and then that was, I was able to, when I said ongoing since 2014, that's no, there is no lie there. That's the truth. Um, and I still take gigs that are uh, side gigs. And so it is ongoing. And then it was allowing that to um, pull it to the forward part of my resume. And then also making sure that I set that customized objective that you saw at the beginning of, the, of this talk. So um, making sure that you do that with the gig economy is really important. And um, 
I give you that as um, permission on your resume to pull things out of your resume and bring them forward under your own consulting company or whatever is appropriate for you. Um, uh, um, I don't find any of that disingenuine. I find it actually a nice um, um, sort of tying it up in a bow, um, your resume highlights. And so do that for the people that you're hoping to be employed by so that they don't have to bury themselves in your resume for longer than six seconds because that's about as long as they get it. All right, so my tool number six for you is to remember your strengths. And this is actually also a um, tool that is digital. Um, I think we get really down in the mouth when we're looking for work. Um, that tends to be the go-to place. We're like, wow, what are, we, what are we bringing here? Does anybody want to hire me? That kind of thing. The longer that it goes, the harder it gets to take care of yourself. Um, but you don't have to do this alone. You've probably already taken a handful of these personality tests for other employers. Um, and I know that your prior work evaluations are probably in your possession someplace. Um, pulling some of those strengths out, and even then to be able to answer the um, question, what are your weaknesses? Sometimes pulling them off those Myers-Briggs or the Clifton strengths to the things that you don't quite do as well as some of your counterparts, um, that allows you to highlight those in interviews. And it gives you an opportunity to really um, remember who you are because you can lose track of yourself in the middle of a job search. You really can. With all that data being pushed to you, the different kinds of work experiences, the ways you try to contort yourself to fit in a box, um, sometimes it's easier just to reread what your strengths are and even get a hold of what your weaknesses are so you can answer that question with a little bit of aplomb and, some, um, and be able to say, yeah, you know, um, my Clifton doesn't say I'm very strong in X. And then you can actually speak to that and how you might have um, been able to be on a team where you butterflied somebody and it was really strong, made a strong team because both your wings were strong. So remembering your strengths is my tool. You can go out and um, find them online and just get your strengths in your pocket. So in those little moments when you're not networking, go ahead and do that. My tool number seven is really self-care. There's lots of great self-care apps out of there, out there, but if you um, aren't taking care of the person, your whole person, um, the job search is just going to drag you down. So if you could try to get your diet and exercise together, um, and you know, when you're, when you can, you know, put a little lift in your spirits, um, do that. Um, uh, Take care of the things that you can control because when the job search gets out of control, it can be a little difficult. So do that and try at the very end to enjoy the time off. If you approach your job search a little like a hunt or a little like a fishing expedition, um, you may actually weirdly, and I don't want to say this and hurt anyone's feelings, but you may actually end up missing it when it's over. Um, yeah, yeah, then you all of a sudden you're back into a job um, and you don't have the adventure of the hunt. So if you can kind of get your head um, around that, you might enjoy your time off. Um, give yourself an opportunity to take care of you. Um, go connect. Um, uh, consider networking a little bit of a walking a, a path in nature. Um, there's nothing like connecting with yourself for a little bit. Um, get an updated headshot. My friend just took my updated headshot and that's the one you saw at the beginning of this talk. Um, go to those networking events. If somebody invites you to an extra barbecue and you don't want to go, you go anyway. Um, try to say yes to every invitation you possibly can and then help other people reach out and help other people find work in your little, uh, I'm still friends with people I was job searching with um, a couple of years ago. And so make some friendships, make some new friendships. This is one way to go about it to do that. And then stay inspired. If you can tell yourself that um, the news will be there when you get back from this job foray, uh, you don't, you can't afford to um, put yourself through a bunch of negative messages right now. You need to keep your um, head in the game to find um, your next place that you belong. And so if you can shut some of that noise off, um, give yourself permission to do that in this, um, in this like little like weird alternate reality of the job um, hunt. Now I'm going to give you, or I was, I was asking um, if if Cynthia wouldn't mind um, sending out, I normally, if we were in person, I would hand you a handout that has some of my digital resources of genius tips. Now I call them genius tips, but they're not my tips. These are, I was at job clubs um, weekly and sometimes more than one time a week as a networking opportunity um, when I was looking for work. And so I took a lot of notes, I'm a note taker. And so I um, put codified a lot of those 
greatest tips and I put them on the sheet of paper and then I updated them a little bit and I didn't realize that it was coming out as a PDF until it was too late to sort of make all of these links, but they're easy to find. Um, so take this as a gift from me to you um, as something to read when you get a chance to, um, to explore your job search further. Um, my little step-by-step -step is under the hunter icon there on how to sort of step yourself through a job, a job search. And I just, um, every time I give a talk, I do ask people to give me feedback. So if you can take your camera out again and scan this code, um, there's a short survey there to allow you to give me a little bit of feedback on the um, on this presentation, let me know what's helpful to you. I always tweak things by feedback. So if you could give me your feedback, that would be wonderful. And now I'll open it to questions. Awesome. I am monitoring questions and or questions and I don't see any, but you do have this feedback, feedback form up, but I'm going to ask you because I did not have LinkedIn on my phone. If you could go back Ooh. to your QR code in just a minute or two. Um, so maybe leave this up for a minute so that people can give you feedback. And then, and then how about QR codes? I mean, those things were dead. And then with COVID, they came back, which is pretty mm -hmm. amazing how, I mean, it's just so weird how things happen in the world and how they have, are so popular now. I'm sure they thought it was a dying breed. Um, but yeah, go ahead and flip back to that. And then we do send out an email after the event and we will attach that document uh, to it so that people can get it. But what great information. Where are you from? I grew up in Michigan. Okay. And, uh, um, outside of Detroit, Michigan. And I've yeah. been in Boston a long time. Yeah. Can you hear my accent? A little bit. And then also you talk fast. I talk fast because I'm considered a northerner. I'm, I was born in Pittsburgh, but I was brought up in Oregon. And so when I came to Texas, they'd be like, "Woo, you got to slow down. I can't. <laughs> but you had. And that might be the case here. So hopefully the, you know, the, um, the YouTube video, you can head back. Um, that is my no, QR think, code on my LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay, great. And I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to, because I want to connect with you. Um, I think that it was just great information. And the fact that you have a book is so cool. And the fact that you live here in Austin, but such great information, you know, we hold these events each month, sometimes two times a month. And this was extremely valuable and new information that I hadn't heard before. So, and I've been going to these because I've been the host of them. So just super great information. We're so appreciative and we're almost out of time, but Hey, let me just get this QR code real quick. Everybody yeah, else. and let me just let me just say that your next speaker, Mark Miller, is uh -huh. um, he's got a very amazing blog that he does um, uh, that he pushes you know through email, and he's a really interesting guy. And so anybody that's on this call right now that wants to catch somebody, you know, his, his job searching story, uh, the over fifty, you know, he hit it before me, but I've been. Um, around him enough to know that he is definitely going to be worth your time to see. I was really excited. Like you put that slide up and I was like, oh, Mark Miller, I should go catch that talk. I really want to um, see him. I, want to talk I think they relocated. I think they retired to Mexico. I think they decided it was too expensive to live in Austin and they, and he completely repurposed his career, but he really has got a heart for the job seeker over 50 and he has it spot on. So that's going to be a great talk. We really have learned a lot from a lot of people about a lot of different things. One of the other speakers talked about remote uh, work and working from an RV. And it's just been fascinating. It's just been really, really interesting. So I'm so happy that you were here today. I have connected now, so I feel very modern. Um, and I do have the application now on my phone. And uh, if ever we can help you out, uh, we would love to do that and connect in the future. And best of luck to you and your book. Thank you so very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for being to here today. We'll see you next month. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.